Next up in our little tour of file system options is volumes. And so in this video entitled Managing Volumes, let's talk about the two choices you have here. But before I do, let's start with something I've just kind of found that's kind of unique out there. And that is, ask most administrators, what is a volume? And watch them start stuttering and stammering. Well, it's, you know, it's got to do with how the disk operates and how the data is stored. And that's true. But a real succinct definition of a volume is a fixed measured amount of storage on a disk. Now, there are two types of volumes that you have available in Windows Server 2012, a simple or a spanned volume. Now, let's start off with the simple volume. With a simple volume, you can create it, but all the files or all the space has to be from a single partition on a single basic disk. Remember, we talked about basic and dynamic disks in a separate video. If you haven't seen that yet, you may want to go take a look at uh, the aptly entitled Basic and Dynamic Disk video. Uh, that will take you through that scenario. Now, a simple volume can be extended to include free space. However, it has to be unallocated sequential space. Now, note that word sequential there. The space has to be sitting next to our volume, and we can just kind of ooze over into it, if you will. Ooze is a technical term. Don't worry about it. A spanned volume now is where we can span two or more disks, but that volume still shows up to us as a single drive. We can also include non-contiguous areas of the same disk. Non-contiguous is a big word, and it means that the two areas are not sitting side by side. They can be separated by something. Now, the space on each disk can also be different sizes. So I can reach across two or more disks. I can grab little sections of free space and put all of that into my volume, and it will show up as a single drive letter. It's really cool. However, once I go to a spanned volume, I cannot be reverted to a simple volume without losing my data. Now, just because it's a spanned volume doesn't mean it's providing any fault tolerance. I can provide fault tolerance with a spanned volume, but I'll have to do it some other way. So don't even worry about that right now. Now, a spanned volume can be used to meet disk storage needs that exceed the capacity of a single disk or a simple volume. And then the last thing you need to remember, if a simple volume is extended to a different disk, it automatically gets converted to a spanned volume. So just watch for these little facts and tidbits about a span volume or a simple volume, and then answer accordingly in the scenarios that you see on the exam.